Well, hello and welcome to all of our viewers from around the world. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning. Well, I'm so excited to be here today with my guest here, Dr. Terry Moran, who is going to be with us for our Gold Neonatal Conference. Now, this is going to be really important, so stay with us. Uh, we've got some really exciting things to tell you about this upcoming event and, of course, about the presentation that's going to be happening here. Um, you're only going to hear it here. Um, so stay with us as we uh, introduce our speaker in just a moment here. I will tell you that for all of the information that you're going to need to know is going to be located on our website at goldneonatal.com. And I want to let you know that this is going to be a free and open access presentation that I know that you will not want to miss. You can share it with your colleagues. You can share it with your teams in the neonatal units. So stay tuned. It's going to be available live on May 31st, and it will also be available as a recording as well. So you, nobody needs to miss it. All right. So it's going to be uh, great to have all this content available, as I said, and you can share it with your colleagues. But without any further ado, let's talk with our guest speaker here today, Dr. Terry Moran. It's so wonderful to have you here today. Um, please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your life and where you are in the world, because, of course, we've got people tuning in from around the world um, and share a little bit about what you do. So, well, thank you for that uh, nice introduction. And my name is Dr. Terry Marin, and I am currently in Augusta, Georgia, which if you uh, are interested in golf at all, we are the home of the Masters Golf Championship at the, I can't even, Augusta National Golf Course. So um, that is what we are famous for. We're um, about two hours from the East Coast and it's very hot here today. It's about 99 degrees Fahrenheit. So I am currently an assistant professor at Augusta University in the College of Nursing here and do research right across the street in Children's Hospital of Georgia. We have a level four NICU and I do research with my physician colleagues and my nurse practitioner colleagues. So you're busy then, Terry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way, in a good, in a way. good I, way. I love what way. I do. I've, I've been in, you know, in some, well, I've been in nursing, I'm going to just say over 30 years. I'm not going to wow. tell you how many. Um, and I have been in neonatology for over three decades as well, but not <laughs> as long as I've been a nurse. Right. Um, I did start out in adult ICU and then transitioned into the neonatal ICU. It's interesting, um, early in my career, you know, uh, most of my friends had these altruistic um I guess, ideas about becoming a nurse. They wanted to help others. They wanted to save the world. I didn't. I wanted a secure job that I was going to get a good paycheck. I had to be very honest with myself. And mm. that's why I went to be a nurse. And I did not love it at first. And I share these stories with my undergraduate and my master's students because they find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. And um I did not find my love for nursing until I got into the neonatal ICU, and that really? is where I found my passion, and I was very close to quitting and, and mm. going down another route, going back to school and, and maybe even going to law school, but I didn't, I stuck with it, and um, then I became a nurse practitioner, couldn't get enough, couldn't get, loved it, loved it. I was working in a, a very large academic center. And we had no nurse practitioners with a PhD in the state of Georgia. I mean, there was just none. But we, I think we had one, but she was at the end of her career. So they really pushed me to go back. And now I'm, you know, one of the, you know, most one of, well, not most, but I'm one of very few active PhD prepared neonatal nurse practitioners in the country. And, um, you know, it's, it's so exciting. I love what, and I think you'll see this in my presentation. Um, I really get excited about, 
you know, talking about what we find when we do this research in the NICU. Well, we are excited to hear from you and it's coming up really soon as we record this today. I know that um, I've had a little bit of an inside scoop into the presentation, but we've also been engaging with you for a couple of months now and we've been sharing out how excited we are to hear about this topic. And we caught that enthusiasm from you because you are just, I know you're just all over the research and the topic that you're going to be sharing on. So let's just talk about it a little bit. We, we got to, you know, we got to tease it out a little bit and let folks um, know what to anticipate about this topic. Now, the presentation title that you're going to be addressing for our live keynote at Gold Neonatal is titled The Physiologic Biomarkers to Detect Subclinical Acute Kidney Injury in Premature Infants. Now, the reason that we invited you, Terry, was that this stood out by far as one of the most intriguing topics that we have ever had at Gold Neonatal. It's a standout topic because um, I feel like there is not a lot known in this area. And, um, and when we saw that you, you know, had taken up the research in this, we thought, hands down, people need to know. Were we right, Terry? Were we right? <laughs> I think you were because, <laughs> you know, there, um, I talk about novel diagnostic technology in this lecture. And it's something that is new on the horizon for neonatology, but it is something that has been used routinely in adult medicine. And I don't understand why we're always the last to come forward and use something that's been in use for adults for a long time. It takes a while. Um, and it takes a while to validate the use of something new in neonatology. And that's really where we are right now. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this in this lecture is the research of validating novel technology and novel approaches, novel meaning new um, and previously unexplored areas of how do we get to the diagnosis of acute kidney injury in our preterm infants. It is completely different than it is in the adult world. And I feel as a lot of us that are in this specific area of research, we feel that the kidney is forgotten. People in neonatology love to focus on the brain and the lungs, but you know, these all work together and the kidney is one of those organs that if it is injured, we can get into a lot of trouble very quickly with these preterm infants. So we cannot forget about the kidney and what its functions are and how we are to assess the function of the kidney. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. Absolutely fabulous. Well, you can see that the smile on my face, I think that just says it all. Your enthusiasm is contagious about this topic, um, even though it is, I mean, it's quite serious. Uh, it, you know, in, in some respects, you know, but uh, I want to hear just a, a little bit more from you in regards to when you have been sharing this, because I, I know you have been sharing some of this research. What is the response that you have been getting um, from the folks that you've been sharing it with? Well, um, the first time I, I shared it, you know, we, I have a team of researchers mm -hmm. and nurses and MDs and neonatologist, nephrologist, basic scientist. I have a, a whole big team that I lead. And when I get the data, I go through it by myself and I mm -hmm. look at the raw data. And I saw something that we were not expecting. And I took it back to my team and I said, look at this. And they all went, oh. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Because once uh -oh. when we started figuring it out, it was like, yeah oh oh and the, and then i'm like uh-huh oh and so now we've we're really then i just really dug in and we you know we did a lot of analysis with this stuff we got a lot more work to do okay. um i'm not gonna lie it, mm -hmm. it that's the way research works you you complete a study and most of the time you develop more questions than you do answers and it and you have to keep going but we we've got some answers i've got some good answers to give folks but 
we we've got some more work to do <laughs> and you'll see what i'm talking about <laughs> all right all right i'll take that well thank you so much and thanks for leaving us on the hook there uh we're gonna have to come i mean there's no option now we're <laughs> we're all dedicated to uh being there with you live on may 31st now listen the opportunity that we have here is that we can come and sit down with you live on may 31st ask questions really get into this topic in real time you'll be able to take away you know, all that information and of course, share it with your respective, uh, you know, groups that you all have at your neonatal units. Uh, better still, invite all your colleagues now. This uh, content is going to be at our Gold Neonatal Conference. It all begins May 31st. You can head over to the website right now, goldneonatal.com. There you'll be able to find out what time the presentation is going to be in your time zone. I will give you a heads up though. Uh, Terry's going to be speaking twice that day. You're going to do this uh, presentation twice in order to make sure that everyone anywhere will be able to come and join us um, in their local time zone, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much once again for being with us here today. It's been fabulous talking with you. Well, thank you for having me. I, I look forward to it. Can't wait to get to it. Yeah, that's wonderful. And thank you so much to all of our viewers. Once again, we can't wait to see you online. And you know what to do now. You can just head to the website at goldneonatal.com to check in on not only Terry's presentation, but of course, all the others that we have for you for this year's Gold Neonatal Conference. Thank you once again for joining us here today. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye for now.